Hello, everybody. Scott Golden with Golden Opportunities Coaching here. And if you're new, please subscribe, like, comment below. We're almost to 200 subscribers, which is really awesome. Um, that which is uh, when we get there, it'll be one fifth of the way to the thousand subscribers we need in order to um, it reach the ability to to be monetized, which will give the ability to do one of the initiatives I have with this channel, which is give to worthwhile. Uh, charitable organizations. I'm really looking forward to being able to do that. So if you could send this out to friends and family and all that stuff, that'd be really awesome. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk today about one, two, three, four, five, six, just about six uh, concepts that are common with narcissists or narcissistic personality disorder. Now, please understand this isn't diagnostics. And I say that for the legal reasons of look, there's a lot of people that get a little aggravated when people that don't have a fancy degree um, pontificate upon things they think they know more about because they have a degree. And so to cover the butt, uh, we just say that this is not diagnostic stuff. But these traits are useful um, in, in helping you understand dealing with a narcissist. So narcissists often will turn the conversation back to themselves. They talk too much. And usually they talk about things they know, things they think they know, uh, things that they are, um, think they're better than you on. They're, they're always talking. Active listening is not on the to-do list for most uh, narcissists. It's not on the to-do list because they don't see the value in other people. They don't see the value in relationships unless they're getting ahead. Um, and so... There's this this toxic nature to it where it's like, I'm going to keep talking until I flood you with so much information you can't think for yourself. And a lot of times when we look at political figures or celebrities or individuals who are super successful in business, we're talking the millionaires, billionaires, there is some narcissistic tendency in these individuals because you do have to value your viewpoint a lot more than others in order to get ahead, right? The people in the world who, who succeed often have to be very self-focused to, to, to a level of exclusivity. And so it can be very likely that if a person's super, super successful, they may have some of these traits. Um, the next thing I, I, would, I would mention is that these individuals cheat and cut corners wherever they can. So the belief that the rules don't apply to them, whether they, whether it be infidelity in relationships or cheating on taxes or cheating on uh, moral codes, in other words, having one code for one group of people and another code for another group of people, or using people's weaknesses against them, any advantage that a narcissist can get, they're going to take it. And more than not, and here's a really interesting and kind of scary thought, a narcissist tends to be, because they're so thought out, because they're so deliberate, if you look at the intelligence quotient, EQ and IQ, of a person with a narcissistic tendency, it tends to run higher um, in the studies I've read, and I wish I, could, I wish I could quote them, but I don't have them in front of me. In the studies I've read about this particular disorder, they tend to run, run intellectually higher, and a part of that is because they are um, wiring their brains differently to get ahead, which means they think differently, which means they problem solve differently than the average person. Even though a lot of people think of a narcissist as insecure, insecurity doesn't mean lack of intelligence or awareness. More than more than more often than not, um, they will be super intelligent in certain areas, but delayed in other areas. So they might be super intelligent in the psychological way of how to get people to be motivated to do something, but they might be under intelligent when it comes to things like empathy, truly caring, emotional connection, and that. So there's always an over under in these situations, and cheating is part of that because what what happens is the narcissistic person will rationalize. I need to get to my goal. I need to get there by any means necessary. And so um, I'll do this from that perspective. Um, another thing to consider is that they are super sensitive about getting admiration, 
garnering adoration, admiration, compliments, and the like. They will do whatever it takes to level up, to become better, to, um, if they have a friend or an acquaintance who they spend a lot of time with, chances are that person has something they want or is something they want to be. In other words, a narcissistic person doesn't value relationships the same way as a socially integrated person does. They value based on what they can get from it. Now, with people they see as weaker than themselves, they'll use emotions against that person. With people they see stronger than themselves, and there's a misnomer in the psychological community that I would dispel, and I would say this based upon being raised by uh, narcissistic parents, both and also by dealing with literally hundreds of narcissists over the last 13 years or the patterns thereof, the misnomer is that, that a narcissist doesn't care what anyone else thinks. That's not true. The narcissist cares what other people think, but only if they believe that the, nar that the, the other person that their focus or attention is on has something or is something that they don't have or that they want to be. They don't care what a person they deem lower than themselves thinks because there's no point in that. But the point for caring what people higher thinks is leveling up. It's kind of, it's, think of it like a video game. Um, if I take this warp zone over here, I will get to another level. I'll get to a higher level quicker. And that's the goal of most narcissists. You get to the highest level of power, authority, control, manipulation, affluence, influence, or whatever have you, whatever the goal is, as quickly and efficiently as possible, all while looking like they give a damn about other people. And that's an interesting dichotomy. Um, the other thing, too, is they are huge within judgment. They are huge within um, the idea of judging others. They quickly will make a, an, an affirmation of whether they see someone as strong or weak, the strong person they will gravitate to, the weak person they will exploit and gravi gravitate away from once they've been fully exploited. And then the idea is, too, that they focus on finding their idea of a perfect person. The perfect person is someone they see as having more power, more influence, or being more well-balanced and, and more influential in the way that they want to be. These are common traits of people with narcissistic tendencies, personality disorders, and the like, and they exist because of the way the brain of such a person is wired. And it's uncomfortable because oftentimes, for people that aren't familiar with this personality archetype, there is a lot of um, shock that comes when you think you have had a relationship with somebody and they care about you, and they didn't care at all. They were just using you to get ahead. So anyway, uh, comment below if you've dealt with somebody like this. If you have dealt with somebody like this or you're currently dealing with somebody like this, please uh, feel free to reach out. I've worked with literally, like I said, hundreds of people that have been in this situation. And so feel free to reach out. You can do so through the YouTube info box or you can do so on Twitter at PO Perception. Uh, we can set up a session, have a conversation, and hopefully get you forward. But anyway, till next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.